think we all understand Sonic 4 Episode 2 is a game, or at least it tried to be. But because of that, some mentally insane person will try to beat it without a core mechanic. Today, that person is me. The special mechanic we're not going to use is the homemade attack and air dashing. Tag actions are also special, but they're required, probably. So we're going to see if you can beat Sonic 4 Episode 2 without the homing attack. This video was obviously inspired by Billabob's challenge where he did it in episode 1, so go watch that after. You should understand the challenge already, so let's go. Sylvania Castle Act 1 is basically a tutorial that's teaching you to get used to no air dashing and figuring out how to kill enemies. There's one homing attack chain in the middle of the level, but we can get past it with the copter combo. And that's it. It's really easy, so on to Act 2. Act 2 is the level that really shows us where the challenge is going. Gimmicks. In Episode 1, there were a lot of homing attack chains, but Episode 2 is filled with homing attack gimmicks. Sylvania Castle Act 2 has these springs on top of the water that only work once they're homing attacked, but the rising water plus flying gets us past it. In Act 3, we mainly just let the rolling combo do the work while occasionally jumping which gets us past a lot of the level. Nothing much else happens because we can fly over the homing attack chains, and after beating Sylvania Castle and unlocking all of the combos, White Park and Oil Desert have all of their acts unlocked. In White Park Zone Act 1, we can go through most of the level with the rolling combo, which means I won't accidentally air dash. It, ruin, demolish, devastate, shatter, wreck, smash, overcome. It eradicates everything in its way and all chains are bypassable. Not White Park Zone Act 2 is similar to Act 1 with the rolling combo abuse, but there is this chain that we can get past because Sonic has some momentum while attacking. I know, right? Momentum in Sonic 4? The level has some tricks, but I'm too brain dead to fall for them. This level is actually a perfect one because it contains literal HOG RIDERS! You know, speaking of hog riders, did you know I have a Discord server, Sonic to Hog Riders, that you can join right now with the link down below? Well, you do now. Most of Act 3 was fine, besides the fact that it's underwater and it sucks. But throughout the level, we encounter Steelians. Steelions? Steelions? I was calling them steel lions. Steel lions. These guys freeze large area around them whenever we approach, and at the end of the level they block the path completely, forcing me to take a stock. Because I can't easily kill them, it took a bunch of lives to get past them, but eventually we can beat the level. Oil Desert Act 1 is fine, but without the air dash it's harder to go in the other direction in a sandstorm. But there is a secret weapon. You already know what it is. It's the rolling combo. I somehow managed to go above this red star ring and cleared the level. In Act 2, the rolling combo gets us through half the level until reaching this chain that we can jump over. The rolling combo takes us to the end of the level where some actual platforming is involved. I know, platforming in a platformer game? Insane. Just kidding, who would do that? Flying is much better, and it takes us to the end. Act 3 starts out by murdering Tails in the first sand trap, which is easy to finish. The second trap requires some creativity with the rolling combo to break the boxes quickly. Barely. After that, we learn why fire and oil don't mix. Or do mix, I guess, and roll into the third and final trap. We can barely get past these orange balls by flying, and I can't fly through these spikes and choose to damage boost instead. Before moving on to the boss, there's something I need to bring up. This zone has no idea what it wants to be. It's called Oil Desert, so you'd expect all the levels to be about both oil and desert. But no, Act 1 has sandstorms all the time, and nothing else, it's literally just desert zone. Act 2 is the only one that knows what it's doing, mixing oil and desert, because that's what it's supposed to do. It's called Oil Desert Zone for a reason. Well, Act 3 does neither, and the only interesting part is dealing with stupid ice physics and getting burnt all the time. A crude trap? What does that even mean? Is it crude like in crude oil? No! The traps are filled with sand. They could have done oil in the traps like the title implies, but we get sand. Have you heard of crude sand? Of course not. But the boss throws everything out the window because it's not about oil, deserts, or both. Guess what? It's a junkyard scrap metal mech, because yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah, let's take the oil desert zone and put it in a junkyard. Yup, that's good theming. Is this not enough for you to tell how much I hate the zone? The boss is fine, besides the fact that in the last phase, I didn't know I was supposed to jump into his head when he fell down and spent a while on it. In Sky Chase Act 1, the first half of the level was fine, but after Tails leaves, there's a long homing attack chain and we can't fly. But careful jumps and some momentum can get us past it. The rest of the level's gimmicks don't require homing attacks, luckily. In Act 2, between other flat platforming and propellers, there are a few small homing attack chains, but nothing that Tails couldn't lift us up over, and Act 3 is a special case that we'll come back to later. 
In the boss, we had to jump into Metal Sonic to hit him, which made the first segment a lot harder, but it mainly mattered on whether he was above us or below us and the rest of it was easy. In Death Egg Mark II Zone Act 1, that's a stupid name, up until the first Metal Sonic fight, the only issue was accidentally air dashing with all the gravity changes. After taking him out with teamwork, we head on to the heart of the egg. Yeah, the egg heart. No homing attacks are required normally, and we take him out. The last level to look at is... Sky Fortress Act 3. This level is special for having fire that basically insta-kills in this game's worst gimmick, the ring shooters. These take you all around to the next part of the fortress. The issue is, the only way to enter them is by homing attacking them. I tried everything. Jumping, spin dashing, rolling combo, jumping off of tails, and none of it worked. Luckily, the first one can be easily bypassed by flying, and the next one needs some more thinking. By flying off of it on top of these loops, Tails can lift us up on top of this structure which then lets us skip a third ring shooter by flying up to this platform. Tails barely gives us enough height to skip this fourth ring shooter to continue, but right after this, we're met with the one thing which teaches a very important lesson. The third dimension. This one goes around wells that we can't fly around. Yes, I checked the level map. So sadly, we cannot beat Sonic 4 Episode 2 without the homing attack. As far as I know, two homing attacks are required to beat this level, but you can try to skip one, possibly. And if you find anything, put it in my Discord so I can see it. But, I don't want to walk away with the loss. There is one chance for redemption. Episode Metal Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode Metal is a free downloadable lock on part of the episode game Sonic the Hedgehog 4 released alongside Episode 2. It enables any player who owns both Episode 1 and Episode 2 on the same console to play Episode Metal, thereby acting very similar to the lock-on technology pioneered by Sonic and Knuckles. Episode Metal explains the backstory to Metal Sonic's return in Episode 2. Same rules, no tails, let's go. At the start of Mad Gear Zone, there's a crab on a platform, but the pipe launches us high enough so that we can land on his right and continue. It's a lot harder to get past the crushing platforms without the air dash, but they're all possible. Later on, we're met with a section where the game wants us to homing attack these enemies to continue, but going as close to the right of the pipe and holding right gets us past all of them. Right after that, there is another chain that I thought would end the run, but as I was dying, I saw a pipe on the right. A spin dash jump from the very right of this pipe can get us onto the one on the right and we can beat the level. Lost Labyrinth Zone begins with a short chain, but we can take the bottom path instead. The same thing happens a little bit later, but the bottom path still takes us to the same place as the chain would. There's an invincibility monitor that easily lets us kill these enemies that would have been an issue otherwise. While rolling on the ball, there's an enemy in the middle of the path, but jumping on it still lets us land on the ball and we can finish the level. The only important thing in Casino Street is that at one point of the level that has bumpers, be careful not to get permanently stuck under this pinball flicker thingy. And Splash Hill was actually the easiest of the four. There were a couple chains here and there, but sticking to the bottom path for the most part was really easy and it took us to the end. So, can you beat Sonic 4 Episode 2 without the homing attack? No. But, you can beat Sonic 4 Episode Metal without the homing attack. This was definitely the challenge ever played in the game ever. If you have any ideas for other challenges I should try, comment them down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.